I have always thought about stopping in here to Dutch Cafe right here on 31 in Bunker Hill, Indiana. We have been installing a wireless airbag controller on Tony's truck. For a parking lot install, I think it's okay. Seems like anytime I want to do anything really, really dumb, there's nobody around. Got back up here to get the next load, going to a Royal Grand, California. And man, after pulling that last big one, I said I wasn't gonna pull no more big ones. So today, we're gonna pull this monster down here. Honestly, that is the smallest trailer I think I've pulled. I believe this is gonna be the smallest camper that I've pulled yet. So get her hooked up and check everything out and get on the road it is wednesday morning so i'm glad it's cute because i'm gonna be stuck with it the monday looks like all hooked up ready to go now, like i say i do believe that's the smallest trailer i have pulled yet in all my days of camper island i'm hoping it'd get good fuel mileage but the last one i pulled was like a 20 foot 21 foot something like that and I got horrible fuel mileage with it because we had a heck of a headwind coming uh, straight on at us the whole time across and it, it didn't it, <laughs> I, I've done better pulling 30 footers for it but hopefully this won't be the case hopefully we'll have tailwinds and everything will be rolling in my favor but uh Zoom out there just a little bit, makes it look a little bigger than what it actually is. But all right, well, I'm gonna make sure I got all my paperwork done. Go around, and kick the tires one more time. I got everything done I need to do. Looked over for damages and all that stuff. Got her all locked up, and uh, we'll get on down the road. I have always thought about stopping in here to Dutch Cafe right here on 31 in Bunker Hill, Indiana and never did have a chance until today and it's dutch cafe restaurant coffee shop and deli but they have an ace welding and fabrication they got all kind of stuff right here once you get in the parking lot now we just went in and made a loop made a circle came back out and parked along the edge of the road out there but uh man they got some really good food in there breakfast anyway i'll be coming back to try lunch and dinner i'm sure but if you're ever thinking about stopping in, it's worth a stop. So I haven't been seeing that place for a long time. Especially going north, it's easier to spot. When you're coming south, you just got to remember it's across from the, I keep wanting to call it the airfield, but the, uh, the Air Force Museum or something over there on the right with all the big airplanes and stuff. Anyway, I'd like to stop and check that out one day too. But um, We had hoped to get up there in time last night to get hooked up, get headed out, and possibly deliver on Friday. I don't, that's not gonna happen. So, as far as today, game plan is to go to Cuba, Missouri and get fuel, and then go to uh, Joplin for uh, and do laundry, get a shower, and all that stuff, and then just ease on out in the morning. Today is uh, Thursday not going to be delivering in California until Monday and we're here at the where's it at the big Petro in Joplin and uh, been a while since I've been here we have been installing a wireless airbag controller on Tony's truck um, he's had it for golly I don't know how long and uh, get over here in the sun or out of the sun this is a dual bag controller but what we've done for the time being is came off the brain and went from two two lines down into one and back to his airbags because that's the way he's got it set up. And uh, because I wanted to raise it up so I could get on the truck a little easier, I got 80 pounds air in it. So we'll hit the five pound preset. And I like this controller, I like this setup. I like being able to adjust each airbag individually even though I don't see a whole lot of use for it doing what we're doing. I mean, it's a cool option. And see, so the truck is going down. And, uh, but the thing I don't like about this setup versus mine is 
the airlift, you can use the app. And I've actually got the app tied into the AI box so I can control it right from my dash. On this one, you have this controller. If this controller goes bad, you're about, if you run over it, because I ran over my airlift one a couple of times, if you run over this controller, you're stuck putting air in at the back. But if you can keep, if you're good at keeping up with stuff, this is a pretty good option. So to raise it back up, we click it and then push the plus button. I'm gonna take it back up to 80 pounds of pressure. And right there. And then hit enter again. When pressure comes on, everybody's come up. It's a little slower than mine, but that's because I have the big uh, two and a half gallon air tank on mine feeding straight off it, but but it works. Now, if you wanted to do adjust each bag individually, you press a button, the lights will start flashing, then you press them again and the top will start flashing and that'll be your left, if you see that. And then you press the button again, that'll be your right. And then you go wherever you want it. You can set 15 on the right, 50 on the left if you had a need to want it like that. On these, on pickups, I don't really see that. If you were working with a flatbed, where you might set like a something really heavy on one side and something not as heavy on the other, I kind of see it. But for me, just one line going to the back to feed them both is fine. But anyway, that's what we've been doing today. I'm sure we'll be back on the road tomorrow, uh, trying to get as far as we can, and then we'll probably hang out at the Loves over there on 58, Boring, California. We'll probably hang out there until time to deliver Monday morning. So on this system, it's really simple. There's a hot and a ground that goes to your hot and your ground. Then there's a fuse that you screw to the firewall somewhere. And we put it right behind the uh, coolant tank over there. So a hot and a ground and a fused ignition wire. Then we came down the truck and across the frame with the wiring. And here's the pump. And there's the brain box, the controller. And what we did on this, and he's gonna probably pretty this up a little bit better, a little bit later date. But we came, this is where you hook your left side and your right side. And we just came back and went into one T and come off that with one airline. And uh, the compressor line goes back up forward to here that relay all this stuff just plugs in there's one plug that comes off the harness here there's a relay here that's a ground there's a ground for the compressor there's a hot wire that goes back to this box for the compressor then you have one airline that goes from here into that for so when the compressor comes on it pumps in air into the brain box then it comes back out in these two lines this line is your uh, intake fresh air intake and we ran it up between the bed and ran it out into the bed so when it's raining like crazy he doesn't have to worry about sucking up much of water and then from there I put this through here and he had some sheathing so I put it over top of it and zip tied it like I said he may clean this up a little bit better when he's home and has time and then from there I just ran across the top of the frame and came down back here. Now that looks like it's almost touching the exhaust, but I assure you it's a long ways away from the exhaust. It's just the way that the camera angle is. But one airline coming in, there's a T right here. On the other side, there's another T like this going out to the service valve. That's how he's been filling them up and letting them down. But with this, he'll be able to fill them just by hitting the button in the cap. So for a parking lot install, I think it's okay. And then I did zip tie it to the other wire and harness up along the top of the frame. I may go in and put another one right here to hold that down. But I thought it looks like it's rubbing the bed, but there's about probably about an inch and a half right there. But I probably will go ahead and put another zip tie right here to hold it down. So anyway, that's the Firestone Ride Right with the left and right control. It's like Friday morning and we just kind of we put the air, wireless airbag controller on tony's truck yesterday and that's about all we did 
Uh, gonna try to make it to Russell's tonight, and we're in no hurry. We can't deliver to Monday, and even dragging our feet, we should be uh, pretty close to delivery by Sunday. So, anyway, I was gonna ask this downstream casino right here if any of you guys have been to it and what your thoughts was on it because I've been planning on trying it out. I always see it and it's uh, stopping at Joplin. Just come on over here. I'm just wondering what kind of food they have. Uh, are they outrageously expensive? All that stuff. Because I, I'm really thinking I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that a shot next time I come through here just to change from the Petro. I did look it up on Google Maps. Other people have told me they got really good truck parking. But, uh, and it's right here off the interstate. You know, it seemed like it'd be something good to try out. Russell's in Glen Rio, uh, New Mexico, and I had forgot about it, but I had a friend call me the other day and tell me that there was a TA sign, and I know you guys probably can't see it, but it's like right here. TA bought out Russell's truck stop, so I figure that's, I don't know, they'll probably yank the restaurant out, put a Popeye's in and all that crazy crap here for a long. It's getting where they just ain't no good places to stop out on the road. Anyway, restaurant's here tonight. We're gonna get something to eat. So today is Sunday the 23rd. We just left Kingman back there a little bit ago and got a very late start. And that's okay because we got all time in the world to get over through here. And crossing the, the Colorado River. Welcome to California. Right there. So it has been pretty much an uneventful trip so far. Um, Nothing went wrong, everything has been good. The only thing that went really went wrong is fuel prices. I don't know where our fuel discount went, but golly, it's really weird when you see fuel cheaper in Kingman than it is in Oklahoma City. But uh, I think we got it for $3.89 in, in Kingman this morning, and it was $4.03 in uh, Oklahoma City when we come through. And that's not something I'm used to, but. I'm going to make it over to Boren, California to Love's tonight, and I'm going to stay there to probably about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And then I'll leave and head on into Royal Grand. And uh, Tony is going to head on up to Turlock tonight, and that way he can be right there where he delivers at whenever they open up in the morning. And if I was going to Turlock, I'd do the same thing. I just haven't found a place to stay. Wow. I'm going to call some air on that one. I haven't really found a place to stay at in uh, the Royal Grand. Like, we drive all the way over there, and it's a lot of two lanes and all that stuff. Someone told me there was a Walmart not far from there that you could stay at, but I haven't I haven't looked into it myself yet. But I may do a little bit of research after I get unloaded tomorrow, just kind of ride around a little bit and look and see if I can find a good place to stay the night. That way, maybe for next time, because I have all the time in the world to drive on over there today. I don't know if any, if, I figure most of you guys have been through the little chick station here. All this is is an agricultural inspection station, as far as I know. When you pull up, they just ask you if you got a new, new unit, go into a dealer and you tell them yes. But if you were to come through with a bunch of agricultural stuff or watercraft, a boat or jet skis, something like that, I think they check you. There was a fella riding down the road on a motorcycle a while ago, and he had a pistol sticking up off his back. I'm really wondering if he come through here, and if he did, how he got away with that. Unless he's a resident that has some kind of a permit for it. Another thing I was going to talk about, there was a gentleman asked me earlier about uh, 
engine brake. I mean, that's what I do a video on talking about the engine brake more. I really don't know a whole lot about what to say about the engine brake. I've talked about stuff like that in the past. And, uh, oh, yeah. I think I could have gotten that left lane been a little better off, but it'd be all right. But I've talked about that in videos in the past about the engine brake. My engine brake does great. I hear people say different things. You know, it could be stronger. They like the Dodge one better. Um, I, I like this one just fine. And uh, you got to remember, if you don't have the cruise set on this one, the brake doesn't actually come in unless you hit the brake. The engine brake doesn't actually come in until you hit the brake. So that's something that messes a lot of folks up, I think. You too, bud. Yeah, that's about all there is to that. Dang, it's crowded coming through here today. We. <laughs> and here's Tony in front of us. He passed us in the line there because I got behind the big trucks. tell you the roads in there is only they haven't gotten any better since the last time I was out here it uh it was pretty doggone rough um that's what I took telling him I said I kind of always dread getting to California because of the 55 mile an hour speed limit but I always look forward to getting to California because of the road being so much smoother but I don't remember them being all like that huh I don't remember that sign right there being there California Huh, that's neat. It is Monday morning here in Bourne, California, here at the Love's Truck Stop. I'm getting everything ready to go, about to turn my fuel on, my log book done. And uh, let's see if I can show you guys this. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that is ridiculous. But, look at that sunrise. Yeah. Well, get my fuel turned on. Get on down the road. Out here on 58 this morning, left the loves a little bit ago, and as usual, I'm running a little bit behind, but that's one thing I like about this job. They don't care. Not unless I'm hot, 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 but, I'll get there in plenty of time to get unloaded and everything, get all my paperwork in today. Just won't be there when they open the gate. But went in, gonna get a shower, and apparently everybody had that same thought this morning because there was a line for the showers. And then when I checked my, when I checked the app to get the shower, well, my shower had expired. So I can't remember what it was, like seven days at the lows before your showers expire. So. If you get 60 gallons of fuel, you get a shower, and it'll stay on your card for seven days. And I didn't realize I was that, I didn't realize that close. And used to, a long time ago, they lasted a lot longer than that. But anyway, I'll stop and pay for one on after I get done out here. I'm just soaking up this absolutely beautiful morning. I love this ride right here, going across toward the Hatchby and all that. Just absolutely gorgeous.
stretch my legs and walk around and check my truck camper out. And I love how the clouds are just laying on the mountains. It's been like that all morning. The camera don't pick it up. It's so much prettier in person. Look like it's gonna start clearing up on down here though. Made it to a Royal Grand, getting checked in. It was kind of a wait because there was a whole line of trucks up there getting checked in when I got here. And that's a multi-haul truck over there getting unloaded now. But yeah, it shouldn't take long with this little baby camper. I was looking at that thing on the inside. It really blows up when he opens it up. I wouldn't mind having one like that myself. I don't know what I do with it, but I wouldn't mind having one. So pulling out of Trailer Hitch RV, and the gentleman that checked me in said he got covered up today in which i believe it because i got here at uh 10 30 and i'm it's now 205 in the evening and uh he said to call this number so if you're coming to trailer hitch rv in a royal grand call this number right here i don't know if you guys can see that but i'll put it in the description as well And then I gotta take a picture of it as well. So I don't have my microphones hooked up, but I was just gonna say, he said it would have helped out tremendously if we would have called in because then he could have kind of scheduled us in and knew that what was going on. And I told him last time I was here, they told me that the phones didn't work. If you head out to a trailer HRV and a Royal Grand, you probably won't give them a call. And he said the phone will ring and ring and ring and ring. Nobody answers that phone, but eventually it will forward to my cell phone. So just relaying information. can't see that but it says cross creek at own risk that's wild after it took so long to get unloaded i decided to try a new place out to eat Finn's seafood restaurant and bar right out on the ocean while the view of the beach isn't that good from the restaurant there are plenty of places you can walk right across to the beach after you get finished eating to kind of walk off your meal they have a pretty cool little patio really clean for all the sand that was blowing around, it was extremely clean. Uh, nice weight staff, good food. I definitely plan on going back here. It was just a really nice place, really good people, really decent food. At a pretty fair price, with plenty of beach access all the way around. This is where you go onto the beach when you're going to drive on, or you can walk on. I decided to try it out and drive on, and it was $5 to get out for the day, and it's $10 for 24 hours 
That way you can camp on the beach. I thought that was a really nice touch. I don't know that I've been anywhere that allowed camping on the beach myself. So it seems like anytime I want to do anything really, really dumb, there's nobody around. And the lady in the restaurant did tell me that in the event you do get stuck, that the record service around here charges a lot to pull you out. And that um, there is a Facebook group called Jerk Pirates and said you uh, get on Facebook, get on their page, and they will come and pull you out, most likely, if they're around close. But uh, yeah, never driven on the beach in California. And isn't this gorgeous? Oh. I started to air it down. I feel like I should have because I'm so heavy. I've got a half tank of fuel in the auxiliary tank and uh, half tank of fuel in the auxiliary tank and my hitch and all that stuff back there. And I can see my tire tracks behind me in the mirror pushing down a lot more than other people, but maybe we'll be all right. Not we'll have a story to tell, right? pretty uneventful trip I've just been sitting here soaking the beach up and just looking at, looking at everything but it's time for me to get headed home uh, Finn Seafood is 15 not even 15 minutes from the delivery in or Royal Grand and I definitely highly recommend and the little beach drive here I mean if my truck will do it I didn't air the tires down or anything and I've had no trouble no problems and there's all kind of people coming through I've seen cars and all kind of stuff so that's cool and uh anyway guys i'm gonna get headed home i appreciate you for watching like share and subscribe and i will see you in the next video